fancy a break? Want to sample serenity, scenery, sunshine and even steam? Then how about journeying to the awesome Azores? This collection of islands can be found in the Atlantic Ocean. There's nine of them. We're in Portuguese territory, but some 930 miles west of Lisbon. On San Miguel, the largest island, fishing, agriculture and of course tourism are the mainstays of the local economy. And helping tourism is golf. For the first time, the European Seniors Tour are visiting for the inaugural Azores Senior Open at Pattaya Golf Club, so named due to the 19th century battle that raged here between liberal and isolationist troops looking for control of the island. Everyone is impressed. It looks like I haven't come away from Ireland. I mean, all the, uh, the, the milky cows and the dry stone walls everywhere. It's very like home. It's very green. It looks a beautiful island. When you look from the golf course, you get the sea and you get the mountains as well. Um, it, in some respects, it looks a bit Scottish like. It, it's absolutely stunning. The Azores is a fresh port of call for the tour, which also breaks new ground in four other countries this season, including the Czech Republic. So, lots of travel and trailblazing ahead. We're going to Russia and Poland and India, we're going to, so that's exciting, I mean, to see. Uh, to see things how they really are in other countries is very important and, and uh, we're lucky to go to those places so, but it, uh, it's the way our tour is you know we go to new places new venues and uh, that's uh, that's what the tour is about it's expanding and, and getting good all the time the new tournament there i think uh, is good for us it's a good, very good tournament and you know you become a senior and uh, you go around the world like uh, <laughs> when you play the normal tour but we have more fun Last year's Hardy's Rookie of the Year wants to top the money list, but appreciates that the tour is becoming more and more competitive. If you win the, the European Order of Merit, it's good. If you don't, uh, we try our best. Uh, a lot of good players uh, is coming through, and uh, you need to play good for, uh, for stay in the top five. Like Rocker last season's number one, Carl Mason, is also making his seasonal debut in the Azores. So what's the goal? It's tough to keep improving, isn't it, um, on what you've been doing, and uh, I've been fortunate in that respect. Uh, so, yeah, just play well and keep enjoying it, and uh, hopefully get a win here or there. Bataille's designer, Bob Cameron, although not the European senior to a stalwart of the same name. It's undulating, built on volcanic rock, and it's picturesque and difficult in equal measure. The views you get on some of the holes are tremendous, looking out over to the sea and what have you, and at the mountains, I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's a beautiful place. It's a good design. You've got two different nines in some ways. The back nine is much hillier and a tough course. And it really does depend on the wind. If the wind blows, then it becomes very demanding. So it's going to be a big test. But it's in great condition and it's, it's a lovely place. And I think they're going to develop this place over the years. And um, they're going to build some other courses in the Azores so they become a, a golf destination. It's fairly hilly. Uh, a lot of uphill shots and, and relatively tight. The greens are big. Uh, they've got a lot of undulation in the green, so putting becomes a premium. And uh, I think the guy that uh, can, can hit his irons close, which is always the case, and make the putts will do well. Relishing life, golf, competition, you name it, is that American gentleman, Bob Boyd. Thankfully recovered from leukemia. He's back to form, fitness, and at one under through 36 holes, back into contention. It really is a feel-good story. Nick Job started the campaign with third place at the DGM Barbados Open and looks on course for another good result, thanks to a second round, 69. But Kim Thomas, the man of the moment, is Scotland's Martin Gray. Indeed, Phil. You know, only five men broke par here on day one, and the Lady Bank professional was the best of the bunch, with a 69 to lead by one on Friday night. Day two saw more of the same. Like this at the ninth. Birdie time. Back in 2005, Luis Carbonetti won on the island of Tobago, and the Argentine transferred that Caribbean touch to this Atlantic outpost during steady rounds of 71 and 72. Rocker, the rookie of 2007, has ground to make up at Pattaya after two up and down birdie bogey mix rounds of 73 see him clinging to a top 10 place with 18 holes to play. The former Masters champion Ian Woosnam made his senior's debut in Barbados. This time Spain's Domingo Hospital plays his first event and with a pair of level par 72s, the eager 50-year-old from Barcelona has made a very encouraging introduction. 
In fact, he was almost ace on the 18th on day two. Now, David Merriman is known for his trick shot repertoire. He's also a battling competitor, and with a round to go, he's just inside the top ten. Mind you, Kim, he is not the leading Australian. No, it's Kuala Lumpur resident Stuart Ginn is once again enjoying the heat of the seniors tour action. His par saving putt at the 18th completes a 72-71 tally. The end of day two, one under par, and in the chasing pack. But they're all trying to hunt down that man Gray, who produces another great performance. This is Eagle putt at the 12th, en route to a second successive 69. A maiden win looks a distinct possibility, Phil. Well, if you pardon me, a little poetic license. The rest, it would appear, are fading to grey. Despite a rather ugly three-put bogey on the last in round two, he has stolen a march. Four shots clear, 18 holes to go. I've been in this position a few times now, even though I haven't won before, but I've been there a few times before. So tomorrow is just like day one again, so I just go out and play one shot at a time. And that's what this golf course is really about, it is just one shot at a time in these conditions. So I'll just do exactly the same again tomorrow, and hopefully the putter will stay reasonably warm and roll in a few, few putts, uh, make a few more birdies, and who knows, <laughs> we'll wait and see. A man with a common sense game plan, and Gray has got the calm, sunny weather he so desired. <laughs> His company for the final round, Kim, is Nick Job, who is so consistent week in, week out. Yeah, nice words of encouragement, too, from Nick as we watch Rivero, second shot at the first. Ryder Cup hero, of course, twice in the winning side, 1985 and 87, the Spaniard. It's a nice opening approach. Makes his birdie too. Back to plus one. Now how about this for a putting style? I'll ask Sam Sneed. Well, the same nationality. It's Chuck Milne from the Great Pacific Northwest. And that was a pretty great birdie on the first hole. Side saddle. First hole is a fairly comforting par five. Mind you, you have got to find a fairway. Stuart in just missing it. With the water that shouldn't really trouble him. And he's made the putting surface. Very good. This is his first start of the season. Didn't play in Barbados. No, we were talking about Nick Joe being consistent, weren't we? And that definitely applies to Ginn as well. And immediately into the groove in 08. Straight as you like this putt for Kiros. Yeah, he thinks so too. Third hole, that is. He moves back to plus one. And joins his fellow Spaniard. He's got a start on the Champions Tour next week at Cap Cana in the Dominican Republic. Delightful Jack Nicholas course. Now, there's nothing that settles early nerves better than a thumping drive down the middle of the first fairway. And that's precisely what Nick Job has achieved. Just fading off into the semi-rough, but no problem whatsoever. This first hole, 529 yards, downhill drive, playing the easiest hole on the course. Martin Gray, well, it owes him something. He's played two pars so far. Pretty good tempo on that. Must be nervous. Last season, his best result was only tied 12th in the Ryder Cup Wales Seniors Open.